I got it. Ah, I got it. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Yes. Sweet mother of double jeopardy backstroking and butterscotch. We're on our way. Who was it? The Girl Scouts lawyers again? That was the commissioner. You'll never guess which unduly famous TV personality made the most wanted criminals list this week. Phyllis Stiller? Gavin McCloud? Wink Martindale? Close. Myra Stump, the darling hawk of daytime talk. Myra? As in America's mom? The woman who told Tom Hanks to get a haircut? Surely you jest. She's holding her audience hostage and giving them valuable gifts against their collective will. I don't normally endorse the use of the word dastardly, but this is clearly dastardly. I think. We've got to drive over to the station right away. We're at our earliest convenience. Great! I've been itching to bust some skulls since they canceled my so-called life. My toes are all a Twitter that we've gotten another case so close on the heels of the last one. Don't say a Twitter, Sam. Well, well. Myra Stump holding her audience hostage. You watch that particular bit of daytime fluff occasionally, don't you, Max? Whenever our TV's out of hock, for some reason, I can't get enough of her sharp-toothed maternal ranting. Why do you suppose Myra's got her audience captive? Who knows? Last month, Charles Groton put his hand on her desk, and she hit it with a ruler. She's very strict. Why do you suppose Myra's got her audience captive? Who knows? Let's get going. You lead, and I'll follow haphazardly. Shall I? You're a lovable but essentially useless lump of fur and icky stuffing materials, Max. On the contrary, I can be a vital source of alternative insight into the problems that plague you. Well, there's that. Let's get going. You lead and I'll follow haphazardly, shall I? Welcome back, America, to day three and a half of my most special episode ever. You don't want to miss any of our exciting guests coming up this hour. Plus, everyone in the audience is going to be getting a lifetime supply of non-dairy creamer. Whoa, we don't need non-dairy creamer. We need sleep. Oh, I see. You were all thrilled when I gave you cars, then all expense paid vacations, and then home entertainment centers. But now, after I worked so hard and sacrificed so much, you'd rather sleep. It's all about you, isn't it? I guess nothing I ever do is good enough for you. Maybe. Maybe we'll start using non-dairy creamer someday. That's more like it. You see, there's lots more fun to come, so stick around, America, and sit up straight. Nobody trusts a sloucher. Good old TV. It's the only way I still feel well-adjusted. Welcome back, America, to day three and a half of my most special episode ever. You don't want to miss any of our exciting guests coming up this hour. Plus, everyone in the audience is going to be getting a lifetime supply of non-dairy crema. Help us! Welcome back, America. Help! I bought that VCR at the supermarket. So you know it's a good one. Still smells like asparagus, though. A very disturbed individual sits here. Anybody home? Guess not. Ah, Brady Culture's hair. It makes for an unwieldy but oh-so-enchanting memento of our first case in a long while. He howled like a sick wallaby when I shaved it off him. Good times. We should have Jesse James's hand appraised one of these days. I bet it's especially valuable because it's autographed. When I got this thing, I thought it would be useful. Where else would we keep the pieces of paper that we're never going to look at again? Twenty years' worth of electric bills take up a surprising amount of space. Ah, yes, I remember that case. Particularly gruesome. Someone once told me that the contents of a lava lamp make an excellent hand cream. That was me. Which is why I haven't tried it. Two thousand two was a great year for calendars. I'm glad we stocked up. 
We've been going through them at a rate of about one a year since then. Hello? Jerk! Hello? Jerk! These donuts must be three months old. Don't throw that out! I'm saving it for a science experiment. You bet, little buddy. Hubert doesn't look so hot, Max. He doesn't look any worse than he did two months ago. I never travel without my trusty firearm. This tear gas grenade launcher is just a salad shooter and some pureed onions. Remember our motorcycle trip through the Midwest? Just you, me, and the authorities from seven states. But those were quieter times. Sam, it's me. Open the window. I'm trapped in a ledge again. Sam, come on. I have to pee. And the PTA is here. And they're carrying signs. Hey, Sam, it's me again. I found a way to solve all three of my problems at once. But I'm going to be needing bail. Hi, Sam. This is your therapist calling. I have to cancel our appointment because I'm giving up the practice to go into publishing. Speaking of which, thanks for all your great material. Sam, it's me. Open the window. I'm trapped in a lead... Nothing useful in here. How ironic! Mr. Spatula's looking good today. Isn't he plastic? Where's the rest of the news collection, Max? It's a surprise! Looks like they're sold out. Has been Brady culture behind bars. He finally found a way to become famous. The police blotter. Takes me back to my childhood. Do you remember how to get to the TV station? I think we usually drive there. In the car? I smell crime. I think that's grime. Let's go. Okay. Remember our old car, Max? I said I was sorry. It looks like candy, but I'm pretty sure it's fish tank gravel again. I've had worse. What so? Samuel! Maximilian! What the? Oh, you're probably wondering how I know your names. Not really. Psst, it's me, Bosco. What's with the slanted soup strainer, Bosco? Bosco? <laughs> I know not that moniker. I am Lord Reginald Rumplebottom, Earl of Dukedom, the third. Sam, what language is he speaking? I'm not sure, Max, but I think it might be English. <gasps> no, really, what made you convert to British? Everybody's got an infamy, that's why. Yeah, we heard. Well, I had to get a disguise to throw him off the trail. <laughs> They'll never find me now. They wouldn't even know where to begin to look. Clever clogs. What sick forces of evil are bedeviling you this time? It's the skin bodies, man. They're after me. Skin bodies? Sounds like a pack of belligerent nudists. Oh, no. The skin bodies are like those horrible hairless cats, but ten times worse. Sure they're not a hundred times worse? Yeah. Maybe a hundred times. Maybe a million. These skin bodies, what exactly are they doing to you? They're still in my... I mean, pinching my shaving cream. 
Of all the things of yours they could pinch, why the shaving cream? So they can shave their bodies, of course. Of course. Not to be rude, but why isn't your fancy pants defense system stopping these skin bodies? Well, after the whole video delivery conspiracy, I figured I'd better build something to keep people from bringing stuff into my store. So? So, I needed to borrow some of the high-tech detecting parts from D-Tags. Meaning nothing's stopping people from taking stuff out of the store anymore. <laughs> Dash it all! I knew I forgot something. We want to buy something. Hmm, yes, hmm. Quite so, quite so. What have you got? Well, there is still one can of shaving cream the Blooming Skin Bodies haven't gotten yet. Oh, yeah, I love shaving. That's funny. I've never seen you shave. I didn't mean myself. And I have a most peculiar device behind the counter. What peculiar device are you so eager to pawn off on us this time? <laughs> it's the latest in Bosco Tech Innovation. A delightful invention I like to call a chemical-based voice modulator. Voice modulator? What's that? I do believe it's self-explanatory. We don't really have time to explain it to ourselves. Why don't you just explain it to us? Well, it alters the frequency of your voice molecules. Very useful, very useful. We'd like that voice modulator. That will be 30 shillings. Yeah, I left our shillings in my other pants. How much in dollars? Uh, let's see. Uh, 30 shillings would be about... 1 million American dollars. A million bucks? No way are we giving out that many tickets. I think we'll have to find an entirely new revenue stream if we want that voice modulator. Oh, worth every shilling. Trust me. Trust me. We'll take your last can of shaving cream, old chap. Splendid! Spiffing! Tickety-boo! Just bring it to the counter. Do you have any complimentary fresh garlic? Uh, nope. Do you have any fine leather jackets? Uh, nope. Do you have any gumballs the size of your head? Uh, nope. Do you have any... Plus two plate armor of limitless squeezability? Nope. Do you have any Pez dispensers with the head of infamous Mexican revolutionary Pancho Villa? Nope. Do you have any ketchup? Nope. Oh, wait. Got you. Blast. Drat. Dash it all. Do you have any complimentary fresh garlic? Nope. Nothing for us right now. Indeed. Hands in the air, Bosco. You're coming with us. Good heavens! What is the meaning of this? We're taking you in for masquerading as a man of class and distinction. Who what the devil? Surely you jest. Yes, surely we do. On the bright side, now you can add the police to your long list of paranoia-induced nightmare subjects. Tcha! Piffle! Piss boss! Thanks, Bosco. Pip pip, honey nut cheerio. Big smokes. Don't smoke, kids. Unless you're on fire. Then it's only natural. We want to buy something. Quite so. Nothing for us right now. Indeed. Whipped liverwurst. You want some? Absolutely not. Nothing like a gaggle of security cameras pointed at a guy to make him feel at home. I'm comfortable with it because I'm uncommonly photogenic. Nachos. They're mine! Nachos! Stay out of the loo. It's knackered. Say, Max. I am not getting in that thing again. It took me weeks to get the fishy smell out of my fur. Tongues placed on freezer become property of Bosco. I got quite a few tongues that way. I 
could use a shave. I'll say. Your five o'clock shadow goes clear to your ankles. Horse off, pig! Dog! Pig dog! The skin bodies rule the streets! <laughs> Last, bugger, blind, ballers! The little blighter did it again! After him! I mean, Tally Ho! Tally Ho! Hey, Bosco. The law enforcement here in the States really is pathetic. Uh, fetch my shaving cream, you cags. We've got skin bodies to chase, Sam. Where are we going, Sam? <laughs> the skin buddies can't be stopped! Hey! After those rats! There they are! Let's get them! How do those laughably small wheels move so fast? You'll never catch us! The skin buddies can't be stopped! Skin buddy, don't give it to nobody. <laughs> Stop now, or we will take decisive disciplinary action. Never happen, Abbott. Take the wheel, little buddy. I thought you'd never ask. Trying, but they have good reflexes. You can't dodge my shots forever. Watch it! The skin buddies can't be stopped. Missed them. <laughs> the skin buddies can't be stopped. I'm trying, but they have good reflexes. The skin buddies can't... Oof. Hey, hey, the shaving cream! Okay, hold on tight, little buddy. Sam! Max! How nice to see you! I don't suppose you have any candid photos of little green men feeling frisky, do you? Huh? It's my new career! I'm a tabloid publisher specializing in the thoughtful analysis of groundbreaking news of interest to myself and others like me. What's it called? The Alien Love Triangle Times. So you're a publisher now? What happened to psychotherapy? I've always had a fascination with the suppressed and the sensual, and for telling people too much about both. Publishing the Alien Love Triangle Times is a logical extension of all my previous careers. Except maybe Vatican spokesperson. Are you doing any psychotherapy on the side? Only on space aliens. I guess that narrows your clientele quite a bit. No, not really. What was it you said about a photo? My new tabloid, the Alien Love Triangle Times, needs a cover photo of an extraterrestrial biological entity, or alien as the unwashed masses calls them, caught getting cozy with some of the locals. Sybil, I'd like the record to show that although I support you as a friend, your latest project makes my skin decidedly crawly. Me too, and I like it. 
How about a quick analysis, for old time's sake? Oh, all right. Think of a number between one and four. Three and a half. Sounds like inverse paranoia to me. What don't you mean by that? Mm-hmm. I thought so. So you're looking for a cover photo of little green men canoodling, right? Yeah, though I'm kind of desperate at this point. Basically, I can use anything as long as there are three beings in the shot and at least one of them's an alien. It is the Alien Love Triangle Times, after all. Got it. There's nothing like good, hard-nosed journalism. You said it! It's time to find out the real answers to the real questions. Like what did those poor cattle do to deserve that? No! What do aliens do for romance? Do they love? How do they get their otherworldly thrills? By playing slots in Kino? That'd explain why they're always seen in Nevada. Have you learned anything interesting since you started this, uh, magazine? I learned why Elvis had such an otherworldly voice. Elvis was not an alien. Sure he was. He just wore makeup to cover his emerald green skin. Frankly, Sybil, this project is disturbing, as well as distressingly intimate. Like seeing Stephen King getting a hot butter massage. Oh, you saw last week's issue. Is anybody else an alien that we might not know about? Dr. Phil. Well, that goes without saying. Is anybody else an alien that we might not know about? Yes. Is anybody else an alien that we might not know about? Yes. So, you're looking for a cover photo of little green men canoodling, right? Yeah, though I'm kind of desperate at this point. Basically, I can use anything as long as there are three beings in the shot and at least one of them's an alien. It is the Alien Love Triangle Times, after all. Got it. How about another quick analysis? Oh, all right. Think of a number between one and four. One. You're harboring feelings of guilt over previous feelings of remorse. That's so true. How about another quick analysis? Oh, all right. Think of a number between one and four. Two. You're selectively audio-averse. I don't like the sound of that. How about another quick analysis? Oh, all right. Think of a number between one and four. Three. You have boundless apirophobia. What's that? The usual. So, you're looking for a cover photo of little green men canoodling, right? Yeah, though I'm kind of desperate at this point. Basically, I can use anything as long as there are three beings in the shot and at least one of them's an alien. It is the Alien Love Triangle Times, after all. Got it. We'll be back. Keep watching the supplies. This appears to be some sort of reproductive device. It's a mimeograph. I use it to print my tabloid. Max almost lost a finger in a fan like that once. Yeah, but it wasn't my own finger. She's got a story here about two hygienists from Walla Walla and an amorphous Saturnian slime mold. Is that the one where they walk into a bar at the beginning? Laundromat. But you're close. Is this the kind with aloe in the sheets for extra softness? Chloroform, actually. Some of my therapy patients used to get a little rowdy. It's getting late. Hey, Sam. If it's always getting later and later, then how come it's early sometimes? That's one of the great mysteries, little buddy. Nothing useful in here.
Ah, taxidermy. The dead aren't truly the kitsch of the living. And vice versa. You're an unfathomable well of something, Max. Tampering with the mail is a federal offense, punishable by fine and imprisonment. As we found out after the incident with the garden hose. Ah, memories. Look, Max. Liver and onions are still in town. Let's go see them again and again! Where are we going, Sam? The TV studio. Goody! Well, here we are, Max. Television's so mindless, you can't help but watch. Oddly quiet in here. Mysteriously so. Well, let's find this Myra character and smack some good old-fashioned sense into her. I don't care if we smack it into her or smack it out of her, just so long as there's smacking involved. You crack me up, little buddy. <laughs>